But I wouldn't rule out Shelby, the uh, Paralympic gold medalist from Rio 2016. Yeah, the second match in a row will have the Paralympic champion shooting in this final. It's finals arena and the second time in a row they'll be shooting on target number two. Andre Shelby with a whole bleacher full of US support. Has appeared on the on the international circuit at about the same time, 2015. Shelby went to his first World Archery Para Championships in Don Eichingen. Came away with a team gold medal. He's got bronze here in Beijing already this morning. But won the Paralympic Games in Rio, and that, and that was just awesome. That really was. Yes, it really was. It was uh, a really great event. Some sellout crowds there as well, which was fantastic. Shall be starting us off here on target number two. I nine. nine got his line. Wow. <laughs> He's just a little spot high on that face, target face. But useful that both arrows went in the same place. Yes. Wow. There's a start. Yeah, not useful that he's two points down. No. But as we've seen, Khalid can change. He's found it. A couple of flicks on the site in between the second and third arrows. And three tens for I. Last one and nine from Eyes in the Ang. Oh, see, it must have been the shadow that caught me out on that one. And a one point lead for the Chinese athlete. We've just seen a Chinese archer win the women's event. Zhao Man. She was the Paralympic champion, but the Paralympic champion in this match is not the Chinese archer. It's Andre Shelby on target number two. We saw a US athlete take gold in the men's W1 event yesterday. Yes, we did. Jeff Fabry. Uh, Jeff has um, uh, been competing on the US team for a long time, brings a lot of experience to the team. And great to see him winning gold medal, becoming world champion. Of course, he's gold medalist from uh, London 2012, I believe, and, and also silver medalist in Beijing. He took a lot of bronze medals as well. I think he had one in Athens. Yes, I think he might well have done. That really is some experience. Jeff, does, Jeff Fabry uh, does a huge amount for the veterans in his country with an archery program uh, for recovering uh, servicemen. Archery without boundaries. Andre with a nine, not on the same line he had before, off to the left. Wow. He's, in the end. He's He really looks on form. <laughs> Better back with that group. Bold call from our spotter. I think that that's a monkey. Wow, that was quick. Ten for nine, too quick. So we're saying that most archers have have, uh, have short, shorter arms, but but Andre Shelby's got really long arms. Yes, yeah. 
and that's because he can he can manage that uh, that weight and some archers will brace their arms out really a long way and i know it varies anyway with um, with all compound archers regardless of their level but i think it's probably a slightly higher proportion of those that have a little bit more compact style in the powers and uh, with the w1s even even more so it's more pronounced that you would notice it there uh. whereas compound our spotter has decided to take the monkey off his back and he's downgraded that 10 in the second arrow of Ai Jinliang's target to a 9 star. But a call from the judge has come and it is a 10, so he should have stuck with it. He should have done. So a perfect 30 from Chinese archer Ai Jinliang in the second end here of this compound men's final. Six arrows, 59 scored. And three points up from Paralympic champion Andre Shelby. That's very Uncharacteristic, I think, is the word. It's so just not like him at all. Another quick arrow, only eight seconds off the clock when that one was finished. Mm. It's not, not the tens he was shooting last end, but it's still a point more than Andre. If he can keep pace or do better, he'll win the match. <laughs> Finish 27 points. I don't think he'll be at all happy with that. No, he's not going to cut into into that lead. No. Lines. Much only by one, and a low eight after <laughs> after a pair of nines, and that's four points lower than his last end. It is. That's uh, that's one of those pressure moments where you you think you're so far ahead that you just need to keep it together but actually the pressure of being chased is is quite tough sometimes sometimes what happens is you start thinking about the outcome of what's going to happen you think maybe well now now maybe i've won the match already whereas you st should still be thinking about shooting every single arrow and not worrying about the outcome if you shoot every arrow perfectly then nobody will ever beat you So, Hai Jian Liang, she was 29, 30, 26 ends for the first three, 85 in total. Andre Shelby trailed on the first two, took a point back on the third, two points down now, with two ends, that's six arrows left to shoot. Andre to start us off again in end four. Great turn. Yeah. We've seen the majority of archers shoot some kind of trigger release, but Andre's on a back tension. Yes. And there is a little bit of a mix between people, what they're comfortable with, and that's really no different from anybody else trying, you know, shooting compound. I do think the back tension is, it can be hard work sometimes. It's windy perhaps, or, or if, uh, if the nerves get to you just a little bit. But on the other hand, you get the best surprise shot from shooting a back tension. So it's the choice you have to make. another nine great shot <laughs> down but not out of this final <laughs> that's 
trip to line, hasn't it? So, yeah. another point off Ai Jin Yang's lead. Yeah, and going into the last end. It's just one, one point in it going into the last end. And Andre's managed to make up one point each end of the last two. So, that should give him... Um, give him hope that he can still win this match all he needs to do is focus on the on the best arrows he can shoot so yeah and still all to play for and he'll shoot first again in this one because he's still trailing is that an advantage or a disadvantage in this situation you practice for both scenarios so you some people will say it's it's an advantage because if you put your first arrow in the turn it puts pressure on your opponent but other people will say they like to be the person who, who likes to shoot the last arrow. So it depends on personal circumstances. I don't think there's, I think it, I don't think there is an advantage or disadvantage, depending on who you are. Depends whether he likes to shoot first or second. <laughs> the eyes are only looking through his arrows to find the three he wants to use in this critical. His lucky three arrows, perhaps. All arrows are numbered. I'd imagine he'd be looking for number eight. That's the, the lucky number here in, in China. Oh, great shot. <laughs> Tend to stay ahead. Scores are tied. Two arrows left to shoot, as we've seen so many times today. A long match comes down to the final arrows. Oh, great turn. Andre's got his determined face on. What? And a turn from China. Wow. So we're into a, a shoot-off situation. One arrow will determine it. Oh, and after oh. two beautiful tens, he's left the door open. This is on Ai Jianlian, ten to win. Which he gets. <laughs> the advantage of shooting the last arrow and knowing that you just need to get a ten to win. And uh, Andre, well, Andre left the door open there with his Yeah, line, he? he really did. But he didn't have his best match all the way through. I think he'll be disappointed with the silver, but... Um, I think he can still be really proud of his achievement. As a Paralympic champion, does he come to this World Championships uh, expecting to be the favourite, expecting to, uh, to contest gold? No, absolutely not. I think sometimes you're, uh, you're under a little bit more pressure. People expect you to... Other, the expectation comes from other people and then you, you, feel, that, uh, you feel that extra pressure of, of trying to maintain your level. So, Ai Jian Liang, winner here over Paralympic champion Andre Shelby with a last arrow 10. And that's the end of our, our program here in Beijing today and for the week. Thank you very much for following with us. Thank you, Pippa. That's my, it's been my pleasure and uh, I've really enjoyed my time. Thank you. All right, so we'll see you in two years for the World Archery <laughs> Para Championships. Uh, next up. Which is being held in the Netherlands. Which is being held in the Netherlands the week before the World Archery Championship. So it's going to be two weeks solid of, of work for us and archery, archery yeah, for you. Yeah, it's going to be great. Thanks for following along with us. Thank you. Bye.